everybody welcome back look at that mess it is a mess I come in here and I clean this room and it just for some reason it just gets just back like it was <laughs> just like it was oh and by the way there's Ruthie's car it's still sitting there gotta get her back out here well before I start the video showing you the things that I got on vacation well, it was not really a vacation. It was just, let's see, we went up on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, came back on Sunday. Yeah, so just two two full days in the North Carolina mountains. Luckily, our cabin didn't get flooded, but it was up to the floor, literally. We got a picture. It did flood one time about 20 years ago. It's been a long time ago. Flooded just into the, you know, it it ruined all the duct work and all that stuff but this time it was up into the crawl space but just under all that so it was a literally a miracle that didn't flood but we were on franklin's on the south portion of um uh, western north carolina and Asheville, and all the harder hit places or harder flooded places were on they're about an hour and a half away. Well, maybe not quite. Asheville is from our cabin. But anyway, yeah, it's, it's really rough up there. But we 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 made it through that. But anyway, all right, just a quick update so I don't have to do an update video on this. Seems dark. Um, not much progress, but I have worked on it. So I got my wheels and tires all together. Those things look sharp. I did a little bit of dry brushing. You can't really tell it on the camera. You can see it better. I just put the wheels or the tires in the drill and uh, spun it and I used, well you can see that gray right there. I buy these cheap paint brushes, really cheap, like a bag, for like a hundred or so. And I just, I don't even wash them, I just throw them away, they're so cheap. That's what I use. Um, I did get the fender, all the inner fender wells, got the windows in it, got the glass in it, it's looking good. So all that, that that um the fender wells were a real this is how i work there will be something with the model that i dread doing and i just won't do it it's like gosh just do it so i just sat down here and i just did it went ahead and got them all mounted made sure the engine will go in with them in i didn't think they would but anyway it is a uh, I got the chassis on it just pre-fitting everything because the fender wells in the firewall are made to the to they're uh, glued to the actual chassis so i got the windows in everything's looking good um got the seats painted the black uh, i asked on the last video what were your opinions on the seats would it be the bench seat would it be the sparkos or would it be just the uh you know, just old style bucket seats. And the majority said the old style bucket seats. So I'll do a little bit of finishing on those. I just sprayed black primer on them. Um, that's pretty much it. Not much of an update. Well, I did get the, get the door panels and the dash in. So I am going to use one of my 3D printed steering wheels. It will be this GT style right there. That's the, that's the uh, steering wheel set that I sell. I just do five different ones, and uh, surely there's one on there you like. But anyway, there's the steering wheel I'm using. I don't know, though. I didn't even think about that one with the holes in it. This one right here. I don't know. That one looks good, too. Anyway, I'm going to go with the GT. It's one I've already taken off. That's what I call it, a GT-style steering wheel. But that's the uh, mini update on that. So, now, I'll hook the camera over, or take the camera over, and we'll get going there. All right, so... This stack is an eBay. These are Ebays. But first, before I go there, my friend Larry Parr from out in California, more specifically, I said it the last time, uh, to Tuwanga, Tuwanga, California, I think is how it's, how it's uh, pronounced. Uh, he sent me a flyer for their, their show. I won't be able to make this one because it's at the uh, NHRA Museum. The Model Car Guys, in conjunction with the NHRA Motorsports Museum, presents the Spirit of Speed 9 Model Car Show and Swap Meet, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., honoring the Gallery of Speed. Um, it's 24 Hours of Le Mans is their theme, Some Sunday, November the 10th. 
Um, where's the address? Oh, Pomona. There it is. There's the address. So if you're out in the California way or somewhere within driving distance, it's be a cool show. And here's the judge categories. Let's pause that and read those. Judged by show entrance with first. That's pretty darn cool right there. J judged by the entrance, the in the entries, the people who put models in. That's pretty cool. So you have different judging styles um, with shows. Sometimes you have the um, IPMS style where not everybody, but it's almost like everybody gets a trophy. Uh, I like that because you do, you do feel accomplished. There's not just one first place. There's like you get a medal for how many points you scored. And everybody could score a, a, a first place medal in that category. But anyway, and then you have NNL, which is basically the crowd judges it. So you could have a person who's never been to a model show before, ever. They could, their neighbor could have said, hey, there's a model show. And they could show up and they get a, 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 a card and they go and they say, oh, that was my favorite color. So I'm going to pick that one. Rather than with this, the entry, the entrance the, the people that enter their models, they actually probably kind of understand this stuff, but then there could be biased with that too. And then you have judges, an assigned set of judges, which I kind of like. Those judges know what they're looking at. They go through and they judge the cars. They got little magnifying glasses and flashlights and all that stuff. So anyway. All right, so Larry also sent me because he knows that... I like Model A's, but he also realizes I don't know anything about them. So he sent me some reference pictures here, and I found this very interesting because I did not know. So this one is actually Larry's car. Isn't that cool as heck? And it's a 29. And I, what he's getting at is the this area right here. You see that ridge? I didn't. I didn't realize this. Had no no idea that this is a 29 and then I built that 1930. Well, the 30 looks different. Let me grab it real fast. Uh oh, be careful, Matthew. Let me grab it. Oh, I gotta move some model kits here to get it open. But I did not know this and I'm glad he clarified with pictures because that's how I, I learned good with pictures. I'm a very good learner if you got pictures. Now, if I gotta read it, I can read fine comprehending it that's the issue all right so here we go so this is a 29 it's got this where the firewall is kind of oops sorry it's kind of flat right there right kind of curves comes forward and then on the here's another picture of his car you can see that definite line right there where the uh, hood or the, the rear or gas tank and all that goes onto it and what a nice car, too. Man, isn't that cool? There's a rear view of it. And uh, here's a friend's. Look at that. Now, this, if I'm not mistaken, is an upgrade kit you could do to your Model A. Now, that thing looks like it just rolled out of the showroom. It's got a serpentine belt, but it's got an overhead valve head on it. And I didn't know they did that. But anyway, that is too cool right there. Got a Weber two-barrel. Yeah, that's cool. And here is the difference. So this, I, I, I need to read the paper, but anyway, you see the difference here? No, no line, it stops right there. So when I was looking at my, my, my model kit, this 30, you can see that it has that, where it just curves down. It doesn't have that line, or I say line, that sounds so ridiculous, like so simplistic, but that uh, you see it's not there. But then this 29 AMT, it's got it, see? So that's like Larry's. It's got that where the hood area attaches to. It's got that definite line. Actually, not quite as definite as the real car, but you can see the difference there. And I thought that's pretty neat that he would um, take the time to take those photographs and show me the differences. And... Um, 
Th this one is not his. I guess I need to read it, but I've already misplaced the paper. Where did I put that? Look at that. That nice. This is more like a 30 or a 31 or something like that. And there's a pickup. You can also see doesn't have that. That's got a flathead V8 in it, man. That's too cool. Wow. And here is a Victoria. I think that's what he said. It was a Victoria. That is so nice. What great reference pictures, too. Okay. Thank you, Larry, for sending that and that clarification. I appreciate it. And we'll get on with the show. So, I, gosh, I got to quit doing that so thing. It, it, it even drives me crazy. I don't know if it drives you guys crazy, but it's like every thought comes with so. Anyway, how about that? Anyway, let me see how many times I can say so after I'm trying to correct myself. Oh, I just about did it. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> I picked this up on eBay. MG Sports Car Aurora 1961. A little 30 second scale. Pretty darn cool. This one don't look like it would be so easy to build. It has quite the the see the body how the panel lines are like almost non-existent sort of looks pretty rough that would be one you just shoot a coat of paint on put it together just for the fun of it maybe like a 24-hour group builder or a slump buster or something like that anyway got that one i got these fairly inexpensive too to be honest with you i don't buy stuff on ebay that costs an arm and a leg because i don't have an extra arm and a leg to do that with then i got another one of these why do i keep buying these i don't know but i just think they're cool I've, the first one of these that I got, San Francisco cable car. Yes, I know it's not an automobile, but it's a car. And this is model car video, so I guess it kind of fits. The first one I got was a Testers. It was reboxed by Testers. I had no idea that it was a Hawk kit originally. So I've got several of the Testers. And then I've got a Hawk version. And then I saw this on eBay for like 18 bucks or something. And it's absolutely complete. So it got a date. Oh, it does. It's 1967. And uh, yeah, man, you can just hear the Rice-A-Roni song going in your head, right? rice a the San Francisco treat. There is kit number 517. Yeah, it's made by Hawk. And that is too cool. Where's it say? There it is right there. I already showed you. But yeah, pretty darn neat. I'm not going to open them all up, but I was just going to kind of show you that. This one, the testers kits were molded in black. This one's molded in just white plastic, kind of translucent, but that is, that's really cool. One day I'm going to put one together. It's like 148 scale, I think. Uh, full six and three quarters inches long when complete. So it's it's only going to be, it's going to be a little guy. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I think they're neat. I don't know if it's got the, the decals or the paper. I think you have to glue it on there for like the, but anyway, regardless. I thought that's cool. All right, next eBay find. Oh, I need to put that back in there. I got this Lamborghini Diablo Special. That's a tester's kit, but it's a reboxed Italeri. 124th scale. And it's uh, it's all in great shape. I think it has an engine. Yeah, well, it shows a picture. I'm not sure if it's a complete engine. Um, most of your tester's kits, you'll have great pictures on the bottom, but not this one. This box actually opens like that, and and look at there. They they did a good job packing that one. Um, most of them open at the end, and they have photographs on the back, but this one doesn't. But anyway, very cool car. I remember when the Diablo came out, and um, my mom would buy a lottery ticket every once in a while or something like that. I don't remember. And I was like, Mom, if you, I'm like, you know, twelve or something. If you win the lottery. I want a Lamborghini Diablo because that was the baddest car on the planet, in my opinion, at the time. So that's kind of why I bought this. I just, they're, they look a little dated now, but anyway, pretty cool. All right, next is, oh, you see it already. Well, it's a 120th scale Porsche 930 Turbo. Unfortunately, I didn't realize this by the pictures. Another reason, you got to be real cautious buying stuff. I opened it up and the it has a not a big deal. There's a crack in the body right up here, and then these are blown out. These uh quarter window posts they're blown out. I mean like 
it could be a handful to try and fix that. It, I, it may be fixable. I'll have to see. But anyway, it is a 120th scale Porsche 930 Turbo. And like I was saying, this is a big old box. On the back, you've got those nice pictures. Doors open. Hood and trunk open. Very low detail on the engine, looks like. I have no idea who who made this kit. It's 1987 edition. But yeah, I don't know what the original manufacturer, who made this, I'm not sure. It is kit number 422, though, if you want to take a look at it. All right, so that's the eBay stuff. Now, this other stuff here, I, uh, oh, look, Hobby Nuts trying to sneak in there already. Um, when I go to the cabin, to the mountains, there's a couple of antique shops that I go to, and, and I go there specifically looking for model kits. One of them, it's called the Whistle Stop. You can go there now because there aren't any, <laughs> aren't any model kits. The Whistle Stop um, Antique Mall in Franklin, North Carolina. They have always had model kits, but whoever was selling them was just way overpriced. And I would just have to pass on cool kits. But I showed, I showed up this time when I went. I saw a couple of new vendor, a new couple of kits at a different um, stall, um, whatever you call them. But then I went to the one that's always got model kits, and I'm like, well, let me let me disappoint myself again. And they had them marked way down. I guess they figured it out. Ain't nobody gonna buy them that expensive. So, oh, I did it. I did it. I'll let me start with the least least uh, impressive, but. It, as far as the deal, I didn't have this. This little shortened Volkswagen Beetle sort of a drag car. Got it for $10. Now, I know it's a repop. It's not an old kit at all. But they had, I remember the price on this when I went in there before. It had $30 on it. And it was like $10. I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to get that. 10 bucks all day long. And um, so I got that. And then as I'm looking in there, what's it called? Not their, in their uh, booth. That's it, booth. Did I hear you screaming booth? There were others. So, oh, I did it again. I got to quit doing the so thing. I'm sorry. Right, here's one that I didn't get from that booth, though. So this was the very first one that I saw when I, when I walked in. Well, not walked in, but one of the booths. It was this. Not really interested in it, but they only wanted $16.95 for this thing. It's not worth all that much, but it's 100% sealed, and I don't know. It, it's neat, and that's early. What, 90, 1993, I say early, earlier than my kids, but I remember when that version of the Camaro came out, and yes, yeah, so it's about right. But anyway, that is a really neat race car, and if I ever wanted to build a race car, it probably would be something like this. I just don't like building NASCAR. I built that. I don't know if you guys remember. I was building that number four Sterling Marlin uh, Lumina. And I painted it, decaled it. That stuff turned out nice. I'll be honest with you. I was impressed. It turned out really nice. And then I just, I lost interest. So uh, I sent it to Jason Hanscom. And uh, well, I asked him first if he'd be interested in it. And he said, yes, yeah, send it to him. He finished it. So you may see it on a video one day. Um, I don't think he showed it. And he doesn't have to. But he he uh he he finished putting it together. But anyway, Hot Wheels Camaro, SCCA, Pro Racing, sixteen ninety five. Not the greatest of deal, but it may, if you could get this kit for twenty bucks, I'm sure that's pretty pretty much a good deal. Anyway, okay, moving on. Let's see if there's another one. Oh, I forgot an eBay one. I'm sorry. I thought I was done with my eBay stuff. I got this on eBay, really cheap. 70 Boss 429 Mustang. It's the same kit as the, except it's got extra parts. And I don't know if the other one does. The Monogram, this is Monogram. It's 124 scale. But you remember the old 70, I'm looking at one right now, 70 Boss Mustang. It's orange, the the really cool color that they made the Mustang, the 70 Boss 429. This is the same kit, I believe. It's just, this one has the, um, dual carbs and all that stick up. That's the most gaudy looking car I've ever seen. Well, I take that back. 
I've seen much more gaudy, but anyway, that is not pretty to me. And it doesn't, I don't think it looks all that great with the, the carburetor sticking out of the hood. Maybe if it had a, like a fuel injection or something sticking out of the hood rather than uh, velocity stacks. Anyway, I got it on eBay and it was somewhere around, there you go. It was somewhere around $20 or something like that. It wasn't over $20 with shipping. Hey, I got it. A pretty good deal on that one. This is 2000 So anyway, I got that. Pretty cool. I got to stop saying pretty cool all the time, too. Getting on my own nerves. All right. Uh, what now? I'm trying to get back to that. Let's see. I think I got this one at a different booth than the one that I bought the, the bug from. Uh, $14. 70 Dodge Challenger 2-in-1. I mean, it's... It's all there. It's. I had to cut the tape on these because they have them all taped up. I ain't buying anything like that that's not where I can get to it. But completely brand new box. These boxes here are awful. Awful. They they open up from the back or something and they just, they're sorry boxes. But anyway, I got that. I always thought the hood scoop looked, or the uh, carburetor thing looked, the carburetors are just ginormous on it. They, they're way out of scale and that, that, intake thing or breather is just way out of scale would never build it like that i believe that this i think it my daughter gracie built this kit but a different version you can't really see it anyway but my oldest daughter that's the only kit she ever built we built that when we lived in tennessee right when i was getting back into this thing i'd had some model kits and built a couple in Tennessee, but um, didn't really get back into it till we moved back to Georgia. But anyway, got that one, fourteen dollars. I felt like that was a pretty good deal. Nice car. It's twenty-four scale too, so it's a monogram kit. And find somewhere to put these things. All right, now the rest of these came from one specific vendor uh, there at the same place they got the Volkswagen Beetle start with this one i got this Lindbergh um 67 olds 442 got it for 14 bucks all of these kits are immaculate as far as the contents like Im immaculate i mean like nothing opened this one looks like it didn't even have plastic on the parts but maybe it didn't it did get open but anyway ever since i said that nothing's open yeah, that's pretty pretty nice. Fourteen dollars. This kit is not very expensive. If you bought it on eBay, you're going to give about twenty five dollars for it or something like that. But it's a good looking car, so I got that one. And oh, where's a packing peanut or something for? Oh gosh, yeah, another one of these these sorry boxes. All right, so the forty eight Ford Woody gave seventeen bucks for this one. Box is completely blown out, but it's 100% brand new. Even the decals look great. Whoever had these kits, wherever they got them from, I don't know if it was like an estate sale or something, they were very well taken care of, except for the boxes, at least these kind of boxes. So I got that one, $17. I've got a couple of these now. Um, I know that uh, Henry Robbs gave me one, and I bought the rest of them, I guess. But anyway... One day I'll get get build another one of these. These are neat, the wood grain and all. I did build the uh, forty one or something like that. Woody, it's very similar except this is forty eight. As you can tell, the Ford forty eight front end. Um, but the wood grain, uh, they give you decals, but you know doing the wood grain, it's pretty fun and very uh, very gratifying if you can actually make it look like wood. Uh, here's a. Monogram, 66 Mustang GT350H. Got this one for 12 bucks. $12. This is a kit like a Ruthie built. She built the newer version, but it's all there. Just like new. Windows got little smudges on them. But yeah, $12 for that one. And I, yeah, you just can't beat that. Just cannot beat twelve dollars for a what year is this? Like eighty-seven two probably eighty-six. You can't beat it, man. And the molds were in better shape than you get them in two thousand fifteen or something. You know they're still 
popping them out of the same molds more than likely and you get the earlier ones you know if it's the same kit you're getting a maybe a little bit better quality it's what i think at least it doesn't really matter to, you know my opinion is what i meant all right i'll save the two cool ones for last which this is cool i got this monogram 1970 boss 302 and uh they pretty sure they repop this one uh Ravel is that 124th? Let's see. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. 69 boss Mustang. Ravel popped that. I don't know if they popped it or repopped it, but anyway, it is 125th scale. This is 124th, and this is a 70. What's the difference? Okay, the 69 has headlights in here too. Actually, 69 is probably a better looking grill to me, just by comparing the two. At least their box art is really cool, but this is the actual car. And if I'm not mistaken, this, let me let me get out the pictures one more time. When I was looking at the pictures of my bedroom, when I had those model kits in it, I think that one right there, it's got the Boss 302, uh, you can see the decals on it too, but I think that's the same kit. Because you see that the headlights are just single or double headlights. Well, two headlights. And there's Miss Jane Fonda. Let me cover her up. Anyway, pretty cool. Pretty cool. As I say, pretty cool again and annoy myself. So I might as well open this one up to... Oh, what do I get for it? Four, $14. 14 bucks. What an iconic car, too. The Boss 302 and Boss 429. Wow. My favorite mo Mustang uh, body style is is the 6970 those those are just the best to me look at there oh yeah beautiful bright yellow which i did paint the one i always painted my model kit so that yellow mustang in that picture would have been painted uh and it would have probably been this kit this box let's see what year is this 1991 if they had an earlier one I, that was that was before 91 so maybe i got the 80s version of it but pretty close so that, that's, that's a nice one. And for the last two, I got... Now, this is the one where I really got a steal of a deal. I got this. I think it's the first issue, 1970 Plymouth GTX. That was the USAC build uh, two years ago. Um, 1982 version of this one. And this kit is expensive, let me tell you what. Go on eBay. Now, of course, you can't judge what a kit's really worth from eBay. It's only worth what you'll give for it. But what they're asking for them, you'll see $85, $75, $80. And uh, I got it for $18. Bucks at an antique mall for all places. Most of the time, they want just way too much for them. It's got the 446 pack. I don't remember if the one I built for the USAC, I think it probably did have that hood. I think it did have the six, but it was the same car, so of course it did. I put a different engine in mine. And there you go. Look at that, man. That's uh, that looks like that uh, color uh, Sublime or something. Yeah. Whoa! One thing I did notice: I opened these up when I was at the cab and checking things out. It does have this in it. I don't know what that's off of, but it didn't come from this kit. But it's. Maybe you guys could identify what, what kit did that come off of? Hood scoop. But other than that, everything's great. Even, like I say, even the decals are great. 1982, man. 446 pack. I got one more to show you. And we'll shut her down. That's really nice, though. Uh, apparently, this guy also liked 124 scale because most of them are 124 scale that, from that booth. All right, and here's one that uh, I know a lot of you guys really like it. This is the very first one I've had. 1977 edition. 66 Malibu SS. Now, I know a lot of people like this, and I know they've repopped it. But that is awesome right there. 1977. We'll open this one up. Does have a little tear in the box right there. But yeah, man, I've not ever had one of these, not even the new one. So I got this one. What did I say? I didn't say what I paid for it. 12 bucks. <laughs> Can you believe it? $12. All 
I didn't even have to pay shipping. I just had to pay the gas to get it back home. And you should have seen the trunk. It was, it was full. So, oh, there's my receipt. Just so you know that's how much I paid. Oh, they even put what, what it was. There's a pumpkin and a pillow. That was not my stuff for the pottery. But there's the, um, there's what I paid for them. And I hated to buy all of them. Not really. But yeah, this thing is jam up, man. Look at that. Still in the, still in the plastic. I don't know if I've looked at the decals on this one or not. Oh, they're actually really nice too. It's crazy. 1977. You could probably use those. Completely complete. I don't see anything missing. The bag sealed, so there ain't nothing missing out of there. But I uh I was ecstatic ecstatic or ecstatic. What the heck? How do you say that? Ecstatic ecstatic. You know when you say a word over and over, it starts to sound weird even if you're saying it right ecstatic ecstatic i don't know let me know in the comments is it ecstatic or ecstatic but yeah flip nose flip nose malibu too good i don't want to say too cool over and over and over all right well i guess that pretty much brings this one to a close if there's anything else i was going to say i don't remember this was the best deal as far as what the kit's going for and what I paid for $18. And then this is probably a close second, um, which I know they repopped the heck out of. And they repopped, you know, the GTX too. But 1977, perfect condition for $12. Or was it $12? Yep, 12 bucks. You just don't get no cooler than that. So, gosh, I did it again. I guess I'll end this video with the Model A sitting right there let me lower you down here so you can kind of get a side view of that thing that's one of my favorite builds so far that was cool um well as always don't forget check it out hobbynutmodels.com go check out what mark's got to offer over there grab yourself some cool mcv almost i just crossed the streams some cool mcw paint tamiya paint model kit supplies whatever you need go check it out hobbynutmodels.com always linked in the description of my videos as well as my website and i need to get a new sticker but mcvproducts.net go check it out i appreciate everything that you guys have done i do uh i haven't mentioned it i totally forgot to say anything i've got a uh, detail master and go for racing products too on the website um um they sell them pretty good they're selling pretty good um, I talked to the man who owns Go for Racing, and and he and I have, he we hit it off. What a good fella, and we talked several times. But I also have the Go for Racing. I ha don't have the decals. I do have the decal sets. I don't have them on the the um, website yet because I was waiting on boxes because the decal sets are a little bigger than the boxes that I tend to ship in. So I had to get boxes that would be fitting for the uh the decals so those will be available in a few days the boxes should be here tomorrow possibly also we're about to get uh the remnants or maybe the outskirts of hurricane what was his name um shoot milton hurricane milton it's about to hit florida and it's they call it well around work they're calling it storm of the century because it is uh it's a big one. So the Tampa, St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg area is about to get hit hard with that. So remember those people. Um, and it's, uh, it can, it's, it's going to have devastating effects, I think. And we may get a little bit of, of it. I don't know, but I don't think it's going to be anything like the last one. We got some pretty high winds and there was just catastrophic damage everywhere. Um, all the way up the state of Georgia, but yeah, that's, that's a bad deal. Hurricanes, um, they, tornadoes are like really, really bad, but at least they're really, really small footprint. Hurricanes are just enormous and it's, uh, it's, it's, I mean, things the size of Florida. So it's, uh, it's, it's, gonna, it, 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 hopefully it's not that bad. I don't want to sound like, uh, just so terrible, but anyway. All right, guys. Well, I'm done talking. Sorry, I'm just rambling on. I appreciate you all. Thanks to all of you. Thanks to my Patreon members. 
thank you to all you guys that have supported Hobby Nut Models, MCV Products. You're great. I really appreciate it. And uh, hey, we'll talk to you later. Take care. And if you're down in Florida, batten down the hatches and uh, wish you the best. Take care. Bye.